So it certainly looks like fall in my little corner of the Commonwealth here. <laughs> But um, what you can't tell from the video is it's like 73 degrees Fahrenheit right now. Not terribly fall-like weather. This fleece is too hot, but you know, I like to get in the spirit. I always have a period of spiritual renewal in the fall. It's, uh, I don't know if it's like the, uh, the pagans say, if there's a, a thin veil between this world and the other, but for whatever reason, I get, uh, I get excited about spiritual work more in the fall than I do in any other season. This year it seems to be more art than spiritual practice, although I don't know if they're necessarily two different things. I'm doing a lot of drawing lately. I've written a story that I think would be an interesting short film or small web series or something with uh, Gnostic-y themes. Um, kind of the matrix meets paranormal activity. <laughs> I've been thinking a lot about spirits lately. It's fall and it's that, you know, time of year. It's just after Halloween and we've had a lot of, uh, <laughs> a lot of talk going on on the network and, and on various shows and things about spirits and things. And, uh, but it gets me thinking about the relationship of Gnosticism and Spiritism. is uh, It's a very important relationship. The Gnostic Restoration in 1890 was uh, begun by a seance. I don't know how I personally feel about ghosts. You know, deceased people who haunt places. I've had some experiences I can't explain, but I'm a pretty skeptical person. One of the parts about Gnostic theology that I struggle with the most is the concept of the Archons and the Fates. I, um, there are a lot of conflicting ideas out there about what those are, especially in modern Gnosticism. Of course, the Gnostic Scriptures has a pretty solid understanding that the elements and the planets and the stars and everything are archons and they're bad for you and they don't have your best interest at heart, but a lot of modern Gnosticism is wrapped up in newer ideas. There's a lot of Hermeticism and alchemy in modern Gnosticism. There's a lot of uh, 19th century occult revival. In those traditions, the elements and the planets and the stars are much more benign. In fact, they're often represented by angels and other uh, good spirits, quote unquote good spirits. It's tough to tell the difference, but um, they're definitely forces that are to be worked with and to be, um, to, to make, you make offerings to them. And, and, uh, and they'll help you out. This is difficult for me to justify with a more traditional Gnostic cosmology where these are the forces that you are said to be under the control of uh, before your baptism. Specifically in things like the excerpt from Theodotus um, where it says, until baptism, they say the fates are real. But after baptism, what makes us free is the gnosis. So where does that leave the planetary forces and the elemental forces and the spirits of those... 
the spirits that represent those forces. In our own Joanite liturgy, we work with the archangels of the elements, which is a fairly standard, uh, you know, um, hermetic uh, ritual magic approach. And I don't believe those are evil forces, certainly. They're not, they're not out to get us. In my own work with the Apocryphon of John, uh, Epinoia is the figure of that story whose job it is specifically to work with us and to help us to overcome our fallen state. And so we've developed prayers and, and short rituals that are designed to open you up to the uh, to hear Epinoia and to, to hear the <laughs> the eagle in the tree of knowledge who is trying to teach us about how things are and how things should be and what our jobs are in the world and it's uh, <laughs> it's difficult <laughs> and the whole point of the ritual to contact Epinoia is to, uh, you know, to get some guidance on this particularly thorny issue. It would be very easy to just decide to be a ritual magician and just do all of the magic and grimoires and the things that exist out there that we have that are easy to find, but despite all of the people that I know who do all that work and are successful with it, I still think I'm right. <clears throat> Not that I necessarily think that they're wrong. I just don't know. It just doesn't line up with what I think, what I feel in my heart to be true. So that's difficult to work around. But at the end of the day, maybe it doesn't matter. You know, maybe I'm just meant to be a mystic and to do my centering prayer and not worry about any of that stuff. At the end of the day, though, I think I'd rather live in a world with spirits in it than without. Even if the jury's still out about ghosts, I think that uh, from what I've seen and from what I understand, there's, there's too much odd things that happen to chalk it up to just laws of nature. Anyway, hopefully I'm going to start doing these weekly again, so if all goes well, I'll see you next week.